Hello, it's Mike Levin, SEO, and it's coming up on 4 o'clock on my Coding Friday, and I'm going to push hard to get this little piece of magic done before I leave. You'll remember that I lifted this uh, code more or less from WordPress, their press this fun functionality, which if you highlight text and you click press this, it sets it up for going into WordPress. Maybe. Oh, there it goes. Okay. So you'll see the highlighted text gets put in here, the um, title tag of the page you were just on, and the URL of the page you were just on gets embedded into the message. It's a really neat system. And I modified it so that um, new press this. It brings up the Pipulate user interface. Now nothing is populated, but you will see that the URL is being passed, the uh, title tag of the page you were just on, and uh, it's, uh, it's so close and ready to go. So my next step is to uh, incorporate this into the code base and to actually give a place for the bookmarklet to be given out. So this is a fairly uh, freeform JavaScript, but I anticipate this is going to have to be dynamic based on the site you're um, running the code from. And I have to make the decision whether that needs to be decided by Python or from the JavaScript side. And I'm going to assume for a moment that this will best reside in Python. So it gives the extra little challenge of returning this bit of code from the Python side to the, uh, the HTML side. So let's, let's copy that. Copy. Okay, it's in my copy buffer. Now I'm going to go back over here, and this is the template. And you'll remember there's things being filled in like file name which are being passed on parameters. This is where it displays to build the download link. That's also more or less what's being done for the form labels here. We're going to have to do it once more at a place where I want to give out the bookmark. But this is a bit too crowded, but you've got these two wonderful uh, little hidden locations here and here. Well, you can see I just experimented to make sure it was possible. Let me do a refresh. You'll see it's actually not in there right now, but we're going to be putting it in there in this tutorial. Uh, these tutorials go smoothly because I sometimes do them the first time successfully and then say, hey, let me make a video. So this is the video, and I know that is this location here. We will start out by just typing foo, save, refresh, Open that out, and there's foo. It used to say bar, now it says foo. That's the bit of code I made here. But I want it to be a bookmarklet. So I am going to put a Java, a uh, Jinja2 variable name, bookmarklet. Okay. But that needs to be passed from the Python side. So we'll go over to Python, and we will go to one of the various render templates. Now, if I go to this main, see this is the main function. If I search on render templates, we're going to find a bunch of them. There's that one, there's that one, there's that one, and there's this one. Now, I'm just going to do it on the last one because you're not going to be giving out the bookmarklet left and right. You're going to probably be giving it out first time you use it. And this is the fall over else condition for uh, that situation. So I'll just go to the end here, and you can see my foo equals bar. I left the, uh, the code experiment in from the last time. But I'll say bookmark, bookmarklet equals insert here, right? Save, do a refresh, server's rebooting, you can see that over here. Do a refresh, do a refresh, and go over to the hidden panel. There it is, insert here. I would have put insert code here, but uh, I didn't want to line wrap it. So I'm just going to make bookmarklet equals 
uh, book mark with I'll make that the get bookmarklet. Okay, so we need a function named get bookmarklet. Okay, so I'll save this and I'll just go right down underneath of there and say def get bookmarklet. Open close parentheses, it won't take any parameters, and I'll say return came from function. Okay, save. Server's gonna have to stop and start, but the word insert here should change to the word came from function. Refresh. There we go. Oh, okay. So uh, we don't want the uh, function, and it's funny because uh, line wrapping made it hard to see, but I need to hit uh, I need to put open close parenthesis in there. We're returning the output of the function, not the function itself. So it's a nuanced point, but one that you always have to stay aware of in Python. If you see those pointy brackets, this is kind of like a pointer or a handle to the location in memory of the, the object, uh, not what gets returned by invoking the object. And so, refresh came from function. Yay! Okay, so what should come from the function? Well, I hope I still have it in my copy buffer. Uh, this is liable to get ugly. I'll hit ZZ to recenter. Escape ZZ to recenter on my screen. Uh, DD to get rid of that line. Colon set paste to be in paste mode. I to be in insert mode. Command V. Hey, it worked! Oh, well, that's kind of ugly. That's just like JavaScript sitting there in the middle of Python. Uh, can you do that? Well, you can if you put quote, 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 triple quotes around it. Now, that doesn't get you out of the indent rule. So unfortunately, I'm pretty sure I still have to indent that and I have to uh, return that. So now it's going to be some big ugly JavaScript. This is not the way you insert JavaScript onto the page, but you will be seeing, uh, I'll clean that up in a moment, you will be seeing code just sort of dropped in as if it were HTML, maybe, if I didn't create syntax error. I did, indent problem. Okay, we got to fix that. Return, indentation expected, an indented block. Oh, return itself wasn't indented. That has to be indented. I knew something looked wrong there. I'll clean that up while I'm at it. Save. Now you're just returning this giant block of JavaScript. Start the server. We'll know we got it right because the server will restart successfully. Do, do, do. Uh, I think I may move this onto something faster than a Raspberry Pi soon, especially given my work experience. And there it is, just all just messily inserted in there. So how does that become a bookmarklet? Next step. That becomes the uh, essentially the uh, value of an ahref. So it's actually quite simple at this point. We go into the template side of things. We're sitting on top of that value, but what we're going to do is say ahref equals double quote that whole value there. It already has the JavaScript uh, colon embedded into it. So that's all we kind of really need. And we say drag, well you don't want the word in there. Whatever words you put in the anchor text is going to end up in your bookmarklet. So this is going to be um, pipulate. 
today and we'll give some instructions about dragging it to your bookmark. We'll say drag this to bookmark toolbar. Okay. Server will be stopping and starting. Actually, I see a request. I don't see a restart. Let's make sure. Oh, that was in the template. It doesn't have to stop and start. Yay. We just do a refresh. Drag this bookmark to drag this to bookmark toolbar. Control Shift B. Bipulate. Now it will be kind of recursive if I actually do it here. So let me go over here and uh, let's see, how do we do that? Oh, we got sort of a chicken and an egg problem, don't we? Well, we just go ml michaelevinseo.com colon, no, no, I can't do it that way. It's michaelevinseo.local colon 8080, there we go. Drag this to your toolbar. That'll be our last one there. Now we've got a bookmark called Pipulate. We'll come over here and we'll hit it. Voila! The rest of this is going to be fairly straightforward, but you see, uh, now all I have to do is populate the data in here, maybe control the size of this thing, but there you go. We, we created a, a bookmarklet uh, just there in that video. Uh, pretty amazing stuff, huh? Uh, I might uh, do things like um, making the bookmarklet a little bit more uh, stable as a bookmarklet by getting rid of all the white space and the indents and doing some URL encoding. Because if we were to right click and hit edit, we will see it's just like, you know, uh, exactly as I had it laid out in the file, which is not optimized for living in a bookmark. Like Chrome is forgiving enough to allow it, but not many videos on YouTube on how to make bookmarklets, huh? Well, I hope you enjoyed that, and thanks for joining me, and I hope to see you again soon, and don't forget to subscribe.